If you want an exposure to a market or an everything asset, they need in one place. You're the world's foremost authority on individuals, advisors, and institutions. For this episode of Fund Managers Favorites, I'm joined by the insightful and passionate Richard Pease from Henderson Global Investors. Richard, in September of 2012, actually won the Outstanding Investor Honor from Morningstar OBSR, and he's well known in the industry for delivering some impressive returns in his funds. So he joins me now to talk about, of course, his top picks and also his investment philosophy. So Richard, thanks very much for coming in. Pleasure. Now, let's talk about your investment style. You're not just a guy that's going to say, I focus on value or I focus on growth. It's a little bit more nuanced than that. So let's talk about that a bit. I think you want to start off trying to focus on the business and understand what its merits are. And you should have a capital light, high return kind of business, which is actually very enjoying and predictable. Um, that's, that's one of the things we, we, we try and focus on. We try and avoid certain areas which are political, regulated, and capital heavy, and that kind of thing. Um, we, we also like very global businesses because it's, it spreads the risk and, and certainly if Europe has problems, it's much less of a problem. The second thing I would say, if you look at the management, we try and focus on management who have skin in the game. Um, so a lot of money invested. Pre precisely, because I think it's important that they get rich with us, but if they screw it up, they should lose as well. That's okay. important. And then if you look at the actual financials, we don't like too much balance sheet leverage. Um, it just means that you're vulnerable at the wrong times kind of thing. And sod's law, being sod's law, it can happen. And we focus on free cash generation. And <clears throat> if you go for the sort of things we were talking about before, that does tend to mean lots of free cash flow and strong balance sheets. Okay. And you shouldn't pay too much for that. So that's the sort of thing we're looking for. We, 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 we like people who we, we can actually follow for, for, for longer periods, too, who've actually delivered good results. Now, uh, let's go over your top three picks for right now. We have TGS, which I know you've just recently bought into. We also have Zodiac Aerospace and Carry Group, which is a long-term holding of yours. Let's start with TGS. They operate in the oil and gas space, but uh, I'm sure many people haven't heard of them before. They're not an oil and gas major, I suppose. They, they supply information to the oil and gas majors. So tell me about how they operate and why you like them. They are an, a Norwegian company run by an American from Houston. Um, we, we like them because they're very capital light. They basically buy in all the boat services um, in terms of seismic, and they then sell the information to the oil majors. Um, and they can actually help the oil majors work out where the oil is. Um, and certainly the longer term track record has been very good. Um, and <clears throat> it's on a much more modest rating than some of the competition. Um, which is very often US quoted. So that kind of thing appeals to us. Um, and they're very generous with shareholders in terms of dividends. They put the dividend up again quite nicely. So essentially what they do is that they, they rent boats, they go out and uh, do seismic research that exactly. they sell on to the oil majors. That's right. And they actually have very good software which helps um, work out where the oil is, um, whether it's in obviously Africa or God knows where, but, but that's what they do. Okay. Um, okay. And now let's move on to Zodiac. Uh, they obviously work in the aerospace business, but uh, it would be also fun if uh, our viewers haven't heard of this one before. I hadn't heard of this prior to, right. uh, to speaking with you now. So tell me a little bit about Zodiac and what they do. Well, Zodi I mean, if you fly, which I'm sure you do, you'll have sat in the Zodiac seat. You'll have eaten food from a Zodiac kitchen. You'll have been on the Zodiac loo, probably. Let's hope you haven't been on the Zodiac escape chute, because okay. they also do that in various other safety kits. Um, and they've had a very good long-term track record. Um, again, the sort of family of strike management have, have a reasonable amount of stock. And we kind of like the sort of longevity and the structural growth story. And it's not, very, it's not an expensive story, either in terms of valuation. Okay. Um, and your last top pick is Carry Group. They operate uh, in the food industry. Tell me a bit more about them. Well, they started life in County Kerry in Ireland, um, processing farmers' milk, and they've graduated now to being a very global play. They've got very little in Ireland. It's 5 or 6% of their profits. Um, and they do sauces, and they do ingredients for baby milk and all sorts of things. Um, they're very big in the US, and they're growing very nicely in, in, in emerging um, markets as well, particularly in Asia. Um, and they've been actually a big beneficiary. It sounds terrible of things like the sort of Chinese scandal with baby milk being contaminated um, because these guys have got a great reputation and people obviously like that. 
So when there was that scandal with contaminated exactly. baby milk, people started going to carry. Uh, exactly, Th that, that sort of thing. Uh, and I think the other thing we love about it is, is just the, the, the great long-term track record. They've shown, I think, 14.5 plus percent earnings growth for 25 years with no down years. And it's not a hugely expensive stock. It's, it's, it's done better than a, a, a Nestle, I think. So, and it's okay. cheaper. Um, now let's go over um, a key risk for each of these companies because there's no company that doesn't have a risk or Absolutely. two. So one risk per. Uh, let's start with TGS. If the oil price halved, it wouldn't be good for them. Okay, that that would impact their customers. Yeah, exactly. And, okay, um, and Zodiac Aerospace. I think it's more delay rather than a disaster. There, if you have a delayed Dreamliner or something, it it, it affects the timing of their their, their profit flow. Okay, um, and the last one, Carry Group. Uh, what's the key risk there? I think it's probably growth. I mean, it, it's priced to grow, but not generously. I mean, it's on I mean, 14 and a half times this year, sort of thing. And if it didn't grow, I guess you know that would that would worry people a bit. So that would uh, potentially hit the share price. I it, think so. People but, are but, expecting but it, that it's, growth. It's not, it's, not, it's not unrealistic growth expectations. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for coming in today. My pleasure. That was Richard Pease from Henderson Global mm -hmm. Investors, and I'm Alana Petroff. Thanks for watching Morningstar.